Good afternoon, everyone. We are down heading towards our first little stop on the way down towards uh, southeast Colorado for what might end up being the last major trip that I'll be able to take of the year, barring a uh, financial or a couple of medical miracles. But there's a lot of species down here that I still have yet to find. Fingers crossed that we will come across them and I can uh, share them with you all. So here's hoping. Well, off the side of the road, heading from me, of course. Here he goes, scaled quail. There's a few more running off the side. There they go. So hard to get a photo of those guys because they just don't stay still ever. We got our first snake out here. I'm gonna have to pick him up to take back to the car briefly because my other camera decided apparently the battery is dead for no good reason. But we have a juvenile eastern yellow-bellied racer. And these guys look so completely different from the adults because they've got that incredible patterning. This guy's got some nice reds in his blotches too. And then as they grow up, they'll lose that completely and turn into a solid, slaty, kind of greenish blue gray color with a brilliant yellow belly. So, I have to, I'll grab him, get a new battery for the other camera, and get some good photos for everybody. All right, here's this guy in hand. He's already nipped me a couple times. Move that strap, there we go. So, bite eraser as usual, but once they're in hand, as long as they're not feeling like they're really threatened, they'll kind of calm down. He is a beautiful little snake, though. Look at those patterns. And that head. So yeah, this is going to be this year's newborn, too. So he's got, hopefully, many years ahead of him. But there's a lot of things that will eat these guys, of course, so that's why they're so nippy and bitey, because they don't have any other defense and everything likes to eat them. So we'll let him on his way. Here you go, dude. Run, run. Here he goes. So I stopped the car really quick because I thought I was about to hit a little snake. It ain't a snake. That is a very, very large centipede. Based on my snake hook for scale. Oops, I guess I got him there for a sec. There he goes. That's a good size polymorpha. He's right there in the bush. It's this here's little baby bull snake. Hi, adorable. You're so tiny. All right, let's get some good photos. All right, we've got this year's newborn baby bull snake. I always find it really interesting when they're at this size. Their pattern looks nothing at all like the adults does, like they've got the same kind of blotching and colors at the front all the way down. This guy does have a little bit of orange red on his tail, which is cute. And a little bit of yellow on his face. He doesn't like me sticking this in his face. But... Out here cruising, crossing the road. Fantastic. If you want to find baby snakes, late summer and early fall is definitely the time to go out. 
because they tend to start hatching right at uh, kind of mid-August into early September and then they start dispersing uh, looking for their first meals before starting to find places to uh, bunker down and hibernate for the winter. All right, dude, get you up off the road. You gonna grump when I touch ya? You gonna behave. Come here. You're so tiny, look at that belly. Beautiful belly. Hi. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> He's like, no. All right, dude. Let's get you, you were heading this direction. Let's go put you off in the grass. Here you go. You go that way. No, oh, no, you go that way. No, you're not going to come back to the road. Sir. Not back to the road. You go that direction. There you go. Dork. So we have here a little Great Plains toad. Who looks like he might have a bit of a bum leg. Somebody might have clipped him. But it's not affecting his movement too much. So hopefully he'll do okay. We'll get him across or to where there's good vegetation over here because he was heading towards an empty plowed field where there's nothing. Barely see him. There goes a fox. Come on. And another little baby bull snake. Whoop, this one's grumpy. <laughs> hey, dude. So we got a second baby bull snake here. One who is a whole lot grumpier. And about to go the wrong direction, so we'll get him turned in the uh, correct order. Glad we're finding something else good out here after. We just had a cow that decided to run into the side of the car and take off the mirror, so... Gotta deal with that after this trip now. So glad we're finding some stuff to make up for it. Alright, come on dude, you gotta go the other way. He's all hissy puffy. My goodness, dude. Had some nice color to you though. You might have had a small meal of something recently, that's good. Hi! You're adorable. Look at that face. Look at that face. You're so cute. <laughs> Alright, we'll get you off the road. Alright, so it was a relatively uh, simple evening, I guess, when it comes to the reptiles. Two bull snakes and one young racer. I kind of wish I would was able to catch on uh, video as I was coming down further south after the last bull. Uh, there was a gray fox that crossed the road and was in clear view for a while. There was also a skunk that crossed right in front of me, neither of which stayed around long enough for me to get the cameras to work, but yeah, we've got a couple more days. Perhaps I'll see another one. Next day was an early start since temperatures cooled off at this night pretty quickly, so first thing I had to do was document this disaster. $8,000 worth of damage and the cow didn't even act like anything had hit him. Hey everybody, we are starting day two down here in southeast Colorado and well, I might be cheating a little bit and dipping over into Kansas for a little while too because I'm on the hunt for a couple very special animals that are really only found right at the edge of uh, the state here. So stopping by an area right in the state to see if I can find one of them but if not I'll be popping off a little further east before uh, this evening hopefully heading back towards uh, where I'm staying and then road cruising tonight. So, we'll see what we find. The animal I was looking for in this area is a particularly rare one in Colorado with maybe a half dozen sightings so far actually confirmed. The eastern hognose was only recently confirmed to exist in Colorado and here, as well as in much of its far western range, it's endemic to uh, the floodplains of river valleys. So areas where the river, naturally, if we hadn't dammed them up, would flood over the surrounding area, uh, 
periodically, creating a much lusher, more uh, bush and willow filled environment. And during times of year, unlike this one when it's a little wetter, is usually full of grasses and wildflowers. Unfortunately, I think I was here both the wrong time of year as well as the wrong time of day. It was just a little bit too hot and dry for things to be out and about because uh, there were some interesting birds that were heard in the distance. Not much else decided to poke its head out. like some serious bushwhacking today. Because the trail just vanished. But I can see the road, so. Maybe I should stuck with the original trail that I took in. Oh well. First of the uh, Arizona brown tarantulas on the move. Oop. He doesn't like my hand. Sir, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> he does not like my hand at all. That's fine. He's just poking along underneath me. There he goes, somewhere. <laughs> do, 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 do. So here's an interesting phenomenon. No success when I went off east to try and find the eastern hog noses, but come back to the La Junta area and planning to uh, cruise some of the usual roads out here that are good for reptiles. And the word of the tarantula migration apparently has spread throughout the tourists. There are dozens upon dozens of cars out here lining the roads, people stopping all over the place. I have never seen it this busy and I'm not sure if I will find a section of highway that's actually clear enough to really cruise for anything on this side of town. So we'll see, I might have to end up on the other side of the town to find anything besides people and spiders. Unfortunately, the night went about as well as the rest of the day did, so an entire day down in La Junta, the first time ever, uh, other than a really crappy uh, weather event earlier in the year, where I have not seen any snakes. So next morning, got up a little bit earlier, it was cooler weather, warm sunshine was just starting to come in through, and so I headed off eastward towards a reservoir to check around and then start cruising on the way back. <sighs> it's been all weekend long so far. Little day, a Sunday. We finally got our first snake since Friday night. Beautiful prairie rattlesnake crossing the road. Interesting time of day for him to be on the road, but nevertheless, here he is. Oh, he sees me moving. You're okay, dude. Not a single rattle either. Hold on, dude, I want to get some photos. Don't leave yet. 
Though I was hoping for a snake, I also have to wonder what it was that brought this guy out onto the road in the middle of the day when temperatures were already reaching the high or the middle 80s uh, in the air temperature, which means the ground may well have already started reaching 90, 95 plus degrees Fahrenheit, which is getting pretty warm for even the most warm loving of snakes. All right, so he was heading off this way, so we'll just kind of encourage him to keep going. I know, dude, you see me. Here, come on. Come on, a little further. Oh, now you kind of rattle? Takes you forever, huh? Come on. Oops, we go. Oh, you squished yourself, come on. A little further. Ugh. There, you're off the road far enough. You head that way. We got pronghorn off the side of the road here. There, there they go. So I always find it kind of cool as we come up around the edge here. We got the plains, all flat and nothing. And behold, the big valley just kind of appears right in front of you. At this point in the evening on my last day, full day down here, I stopped back by one of the popular canyons in the area to check see if I could find anything running around down there and found, amazingly, one of the first lizards of the whole trip, a young uh, prairie lizard running around. And then as I left, uh, a couple of people were actually finding tarantulas in the parking lot for the canyon and I got my chance to hold one for the first time ever. But still no snakes, so I kept on moving late into the night, hoping something would cross the road somewhere. Now we've got our usual Woodhouse's toad out here, making his way across the road. We'll let him get to it again. Off you go, dude. Oak. Well, it took literally all freaking night, but we've got another. Beautiful little prairie rattlesnake here. The car coming, so I might have to get quick photos and move them off. Got a second beautiful prairie rattlesnake out here finally. 12 hours after the first one. Got a car coming, so I need to make sure this guy doesn't move off the road at all. show this guy a little better. He's got a beautiful pattern that's actually really reminds me of the Massasaugas, but well, desert Massasaugas don't get this big. And they don't have those stripes at the end of the tail generally, and well, wrong scale is hard to show you here with this guy, but moving tonight. Might be the only thing, but hey, a snake is a snake. And this prairie rattlesnake honestly was a beautiful specimen, although a little bit skinny, which could either be from, could be a female that recently dropped young, or just it's been dry in Colorado, so feeding might not be great. All right, dude, with the windy, blustery night out here, let's get you off, okay? Because we don't want you getting run over. Come here. I know. <laughs> you feel the hook messing with you. Come here. Oops. Let's get you off the road, okay? Run, run. Go that way. Run. He's gonna go hide in that bush, okay. Which is good. There's another one out here, and another car that's coming. 
So I want to try and make sure they don't run him over. And they certainly would have if he had been on that side of the road. Well, I don't know what it is about 11 o'clock, but here's our second rattlesnake in maybe a minute and a half. Poking along. We'll have to make sure he gets off the road here, though. So I'll get a couple of photos and then encourage him to move uh, the other direction where he was going. All right, dude. Let's get off the road. No, I'm going to touch you. Hi. Come here. Come on. Whoop. Yep. You can go that way. Go, go. No rattling at all either. Here he goes. Keep going. I don't want you on the road where people will hit you, okay? Good boy. I would later get reports that other people who were down in the exact same area as me at the exact same time kept finding snakes, but for me, temperatures were doing weird things and the wind wouldn't stop blowing and nothing else was crossing the road, so I hit the hay and next morning headed out towards the nearby bluffs to try one last time to find stuff. Did find a couple interesting fossils within the sandstone bluffs, but no snakes there. Then back down the dirt road towards the town and... And this might be one of the native species of mantis, stagomantis, because it does not match what I know of the uh, European species. Looks like a male with the long wings, but I'm not entirely certain. Not familiar with the species down here, really. That's kind of cool. Come here, sir. Let's get you up on the hand. Or not. <laughs> Try that again. There we go. Well, oh, focus on the hand, not the background, you stupid camera. He's kind of cool looking. Got a red-tailed hawk up on the pole here. Let's see how long he stays there. I just talked to the next pole or two up there. Well, folks, I think that's just about it for the uh, trip to the southeast here. This is reptile wise, honestly, the most dead that I have ever seen this place out here. Usually, there's a lot more activity, like even the lizards. There's usually fence lizards all over the place, especially down like in the Vogel Canyon area. Just nothing. So I'm not sure what's going on, if it's just too dry or something else is going weird with the weather. Last night was rather strange because down in the canyon area it stayed 80 degrees until like 12, 12, 31 o'clock while over in La Junta it dropped to like 65 early on and then warmed back up and it was windy so I don't know if that has anything to do with it but I mean at least we did find a few rattlesnakes and some interesting birds and insects and arachnids but looks like I will probably have to take another trip down here probably sometime next spring and thinking maybe to find some of the species I'm after like the uh, rat snakes and the ground snakes perhaps a trip to uh, West Texas is called for at the moment uh, probably next spring early midsummer as well but until next or until then um, I might have another couple short trips off to uh, near where I live to find the hog noses because they should be starting to move fairly shortly. But after that, we're probably going to be switching gears a bit and moving from the wildlife adventures during summer to um, 
checking up on the different plant species and uh, talking about the animals that live back at home. So some more informational things on that end will probably be showing up on the channel. But until then, as always, uh, supporters on patreon.com slash hcarlton, I thank you greatly. Uh, you helped me to be able to afford some of these trips and also keep things back at home up and running. Uh, there's also the potential for giving one-time donations if you don't want to do a monthly thing at coffee. That's ko-fi.com slash Carlton Carnivores. You can also find uh, the merch uh, shop link as well as the general uh, plant sales list, the database, the blog, and more at the website carltoncarnivores.com. And as always, I'm sharing photos and videos and all sorts of stuff on social media at Instagram, uh, Facebook, and TikTok at Carlton Carnivores. But until next time, I'm Hawk and Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores.